Donald Trump has overturned decades of official US policy by announcing that the United States now recognizes Jerusalem as Israel's capital and confirming that uh, he is moving the country's embassy from Tel Aviv to it. Jerusalem. While Israel's government welcomed the move, others warned it would kill off any remaining hope of peace in the Middle East. So why is this decision so controversial? Here's Lorna Shaddock. Jerusalem, city of religious devotion and focal point for one of the world's bitterest conflicts. For Israel, it's central to 3,000 years of Jewish history. But for Palestinian Muslims, it's revered as the site where the Prophet Muhammad ascended to heaven. A hundred years ago, Britain's government, which then controlled the area, publicly stated the Jewish people had a right to a homeland there. Today, the city encloses both Israeli and Palestinian territory. Donald Trump visited back in May. Now he says he'll move the US embassy there from less contested Tel Aviv. The Islamist group Hamas has warned that could trigger a new uprising or intifada. As protests begin across the Muslim world, some say Donald Trump's respecting Israel's right to choose its own capital, others that he's pouring fuel on a decades-old fire. Lorna Shaddock, Good Morning Britain. Joining us uh, in the studio, the Muslim Council of Britain's Assistant Secretary-General, Mick Versi, uh, who believes that this move is uh, a backwards move for world peace. And from Washington, we're joined by one of America's most famous rabbis. Shmuley Botea, who supports President Bush's, uh, sorry, President Trump's actions, excuse me, getting lost in history there, which is, um, is uh, you know, part of the problem, isn't it, uh, Rabbi Botea? Uh, I wonder if you can just tell us what you felt when you heard uh, President Trump's uh, announcement. Well, I thought it was a very courageous move. But like President Trump said, it was also kind of obvious. Let's remember, Israel's parliament, Israel's Supreme Court, they're all in Jerusalem. King David founded Jerusalem 3,000 years ago. There have been Jewish temples there for 3,000 years. Jews have paid, prayed for 2,000 years to return to Jerusalem three times a day. And since 1844, is, Jerusalem has had a Jewish majority population. Our Muslim brothers and sisters have complete rights to worship at the Al-Aqsa Mosque. Israel must always preserve that. This is not about Israeli sovereignty excluding anyone else. It's about Israel establishing its ancient capital and America, which is the world's foremost republic and Israel's closest ally, simply recognizing the obvious that Jerusalem is Israel's capital okay. and always has been. OK, well, let's put that to uh, Mick Diversi as well. It was it was it was going to happen. It was obvious that it needed to happen. And it's as simple as that. There's nothing more to it. I think it's a, a lot more complicated than that. The reality is that what has happened here is Trump has, in, in essence, supported Israel's position on a, on a very controversial issue, rather than recognize that this needs to be part of a long-standing uh, negotiation process where there is something to Israel, for, for Israel to gain by creating a two-state solution. What we have now is that Israel is able to create facts on the ground occupy extra territory and suddenly that will me that is then recognized by by uh, president trump there's no understanding of international law here instead there's a violation of international law and you see the the pope the un european countries our prime minister standing up and saying this is unhelpful and not good for peace there is a, a, obviously a huge sensitive and controversial row over the status of jerusalem and it is important both to the palestinians and to the israel uh, israelis um the trouble is what this then leads to. And what is your concern? Is it that this will trigger something? I think one of the biggest problems here is that if there is no Jerusalem as the capital of a Palestinian state, I can't see how there will be a Palestinian state. And what, what's already happened is Saeb Arakat, who's the Palestinian chief negotiator, or was the, the chief negotiator, said, we should now stop talking about a two-state solution and talk about equal rights for equal people within a one-state solution. That's something which it seems to have gained a lot of traction right now. And with this action, I can imagine many more people falling down that route, which will mean a very, very different situation and, and a very troubling uh, end goal. Do you, Rabbi um, Bataya, do you worry that even though you're satisfied and happy and relieved that President Trump has made this statement uh, on Jerusalem and it becomes uh, the capital, the recognized capital of Israel according to America, are you concerned that actually this could lead to violence? 
Well, I, I want to actually thank Mick Dodd for, for not saying it would lead to violence. I think the most offensive argument we've heard so far against our Muslim brothers and sisters, which, to which I completely object, is that the Arab street would engage in violence. Mm -hmm. The Islamic faith is, is a faith that emphasizes peace. And if they disagree with this, they will disagree the way Mikta did, which is diplomatically and registering their complaints. But the idea it's going to lead to violence is such an insult against our Arab brothers and sisters. And it's not an argument that we ought to use, aside from the fact that neither American foreign policy or British foreign policy should be dictated by, by intimidation or threats. Let me just remind my Palestinian brothers and sisters and Mikdad that uh, Yasser Arafat was offered uh, large chunks of most of uh, East Jerusalem in a peace deal by, uh, by Israel under Prime Minister Ehud uh, Barak in, in 2001. He turned it down. And then Mahmoud Abbas was offered the same under uh, Prime Minister Ehud Olmert, and he turned it down. So to say that this new recognition by President Trump is going to lead to the Palestinians to withdraw from the negotiating table, they're not currently negotiating at all. And uh, they're refusing to even meet Israel face to face for bilateral okay. negotiations. I actually feel the opposite is true, that by taking Jerusalem off the table, our Palestinian brothers will see that, that they have to compromise and okay. that Jerusalem can't be discussed Let, just let's, as Israel's let's, capital. Let's put that, Rabbi, let's put that to, to, to Mick, Dad. Well, I mean, look, you have a, a nuclear power with one of the largest armies in the world on one side, and you have a Palestinian occupied uh, territory with no army and individuals who, who, who end up acting in an unacceptable way. What, what we have here is the longest military occupation in history. The longest occupation in the world at the moment, the longest military occupation is Israel's military occupation of, of uh, Palestine. And you have again and again hundreds of um, Palestinian civilians having been killed over this process. Uh, over a thousand in Gaza recently. And right now, what do you think the Palestinians can do? Mm. Well, how can we have international law being implemented? That's all we're asking for. It's not about let's try and give up more. It's, it's like someone steals someone's land and then they occupy it. And now the question is, how much should they give back? I mean, that's not reasonable. Mm. We need to have law being implemented. We, we care about the rule of law here and international law and UN Security Council resolutions. These are things that the entire international community has been unanimous and con uh, international consensus on one issue and you have President Trump as is un not unlike him doing the exact opposite yeah. it's a huge problem that we have uh, happening and uh, the United Nations Security Council meets tomorrow to decide what to do all right McDadversy thanks very much indeed and uh, Rabbi Batea thank you very much indeed as thank well you.